need to download the app again? Seriously? Seriously. Where's my app store? How is this? Hey there, it is Tom Stern on behalf of Indie Structural Productions once again, and it is time for a monthly update. I missed last month, and I'm so sorry about that, but, uh, yeah, stuff happens. Just realized it was the last day of the month, and it was already kind of late in the evening, and I had not done anything toward it. So it was kind of, yeah, very brief, just took my phone around, and not ideal. This time around, different. Back with the usual setup, but I am on a time restriction, because I need to get this thing edited and out within, what, 45 minutes? So yeah, wish me luck. I'm gonna stop talking about that sort of stuff and get to talking about what I've managed to do this month. Really, this month, very little. I've had almost no time at all. I haven't been able to make it to the workshops due to work, my day job and then the workshop not being open, a lot of bank holidays, and yeah. But I've done a lot at home, I got the base, roughly sanded, now it's sanded to about 180. There's still some, some sanding to go. There we are. There's a lovely, lovely base for you. The neck is fitting nicely. I still need to kind of really fit it, fit it. Now the base for Johnny already has a belly carve. All the cavities and everything else have been routed. The back plate is somewhere over there, but yeah, that's there anyways. Made out of the same piece of mahogany too. I don't think I've actually gone through, oh, and I've got, gotten started on the headstock inlay, which is basically it's an engraving that I filled with mother of pearl dust, so his signature and the band logo. But hey, I haven't talked to you about specs all that much. So this is indeed a fretless base. It has a teak fretboard, loom inlay, side dots. If you saw on Instagram, I posted a little video about that. A three-piece maple neck, a two-piece mahogany body, and a curly birch veneer top. And it is it's actually fairly lightweight, which is really good because, well, bases can get very heavy very quickly, so uncomfortable to play a lot of gigs like that. And seeing as Johnny does play a lot of gigs, this is just about right. <laughs> very dusty. I'm still halfway through sanding, but it's gonna look stellar. I can't wait to actually get some stain on it. So it's gonna have, basically I'm gonna be using black stain that I'm gonna kind of uh, sand back. It's gonna be lunar gray, so to speak. A little bit of a burst effect on the back, so black sides and a little bit of burst effect and wearing it down. There's going to be so many cool things coming up for this. Uh, it's going to get relicked a little bit and all kinds of crazy stuff. I, I'm really looking forward to it. But hey, that's the bass. Then let's have a look at the uh, production guitars. Alright, so what I managed to do yesterday actually at the workshop, I had a goal of doing, I was processing a lot of wood. So I had the goal of getting six fretboards done or processed and four necks. In total, I managed to do seven necks and eight fretboards. So that's pretty cool. Three of them are going to be a little different. They are going to be, as you can see, this isn't quite what a fretboard's supposed to look like. Um, I bought a big plank of ebony and I'm going to use all of it. So this is going to have resin kind of filling in all the rest, as will that one, and that one. But then in other news, I do have some very, very nice looking ebony fretboards, like so. It kind of, it's a shame, because the planks that I had for the budget that I had, um, weren't quite optim optimally sized, so these are going to be 22 um, fret instruments, this next batch. I would have wanted them, them to be 24 frets, but 22 is just fine. I mean, personally, I don't really play 24 fret instruments, but personally I don't play guitar in the first place, so that doesn't really count. Now does it. Uh, let's see, how can I get these out without everything falling apart on me? So I showed off these last time, but just with my phone and crappy quality. So here's the Curly Birch Daedalus with an older body. I do have a lot of veneer, so 
Yeah, there's going to be tons of that coming up. This, this though, the alder bodied Bubinga top Icarus. This is going to look incredible. I cannot wait. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be nice. And I really love the top. But um, for any of those people out in the States who are watching this, sorry, you can't have it. Uh, this will only be available in the EU due to all the CITES stuff, and I don't have the paperwork for it, so sorry. Now, this is going to be fun. So I have some really, really old spalted and flamed birch. And as you can notice, there's a little bit of a gap here. So I did talk about it. It's going to be filled up with resin. And what resin in question? That's going to be the chill, clear epoxy from Polymer's technology. From Polymer's technology. Go check them out. This stuff is incredible. I've been waiting to get to use it for a very long time. And I'm happy that I finally can use it on something. So, um, ash body, birch, and resin top. And it's going to be nice green color actually so that's gonna be fairly sweet uh, then a curly birch topped icarus i haven't done the binding on this one yet and it is an ash body icarus at that all of these guitars are going to have walnut necks so they're going to be three piece walnut necks um, yes i can do one piece necks but i prefer the stability of multi-laminates and I found three piece next to work really really well so if it's not broke why fix it one thing I do want to hear from you guys is that do I start making reverse headstocks or traditional headstocks now I'll show you what I mean for my reasoning because personally while I do like headstocks this way around um, I always find it strange that whenever you have to tune, you have to kind of like twist your arm to kind of tune stuff. And it's like, yes, while you do have all the tension and everything else working with you on the reverse headstock, always a plus as well, you're going from a plane position. If you see that you need to tune something, you just do this. So you're keeping the exact same, you know, hand position. You don't have to reach around to try and tune stuff, but you can just do this. So... Would you guys prefer to see me do reverse head stocks? Seeing as a lot of people do do that, um, I don't want to seem like I'm copying or anything like that. But then again, so many guitar builders out in the world, there's yeah, there's not there's very little original ideas out there anymore. But preferably, I would do reverse head stocks. But I want to hear from my viewers what you think would be better. Do you prefer reverse headstocks or traditional faced headstocks? I don't know how you describe that. Well, headstocks in the traditional manner or reverse. Apart from all the guitar stuff that I've been working on, yes, there's a few other things as well, but or a few other projects. But in general, what I've done with videos now, I stopped putting out homebrew videos, mostly due to the fact that I only have a couple left. But they weren't gaining enough traction for what the effort was put into them. And I really want people to see them. I think I have a lot to offer when it comes to tutorials in that format, because that's exactly the type of video that I was looking for when I was starting up doing all this stuff. And I still haven't found anybody who does it quite to the extent and detail or coming from a background of building guitars at, you know, almost a factory type level to then coming back to building them at home. You kind of have a different perspective on it than just a home builder or somebody who's always built guitars um, at a workshop. If you haven't checked them out, I really recommend you do if you're interested in the subject matter. If you know someone who is, please, sh please just share. It helps out quite a bit. And I, yeah, I hope that people will start to notice that I might be having a couple of good points when it comes to it. That sentence didn't make any sense. When it comes to the videos and stuff, I've been releasing them at like 1 a.m. So basically at, you know, immediately when the day turns, I've published a new video. Just because now I'm trying to see that at what point in the day within that 24 hours are my videos viewed. So that 
way I can start putting out the next series of videos at, you know, well, catering to my demographic, so to speak. Um, there's four more episodes of building two guitars at the same time. That is such a long title. And then I'm going to be moving on to some custom work that I did for Oceana, and then the bass build, and then the second batch of guitars. So lots of cool stuff coming up. But hey, I am really running out of time. I did this, I managed to do this in like 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop, edit this, and upload it, and then I'm going to... I need to head out the door, so, uh, excuse me. So I will see you guys next month again for one of these videos, but I will see you for our build video this Friday. So I'm out. See you guys. Bye-bye.